for most of us, childhood memories are incomplete without bicycles. From getting their first bicycle to learning how to ride, pedaling through neighborhood lanes is a treasured memory, especially in India. One group which brought locally manufactured cycles into lives of countless such Indian families is Hero Cycles, the largest integrated cycle manufacturer in the world, with a legacy of over six decades. Hero Cycles is a market leader in both standard and premium segments in India, with a network of over 250 suppliers and 2,800 dealerships in India. Hero Cycles exports to over 70 countries worldwide. Meet the chairman and managing director Pankaj Munjal, the second generation scion of the Munjal family. Mr. Munjal has driven Hero Cycles to an exponential growth in India and the world. I'm Jasper Reed, and this is Billion Dollar Idea. Today we're delighted to be joined by Pankaj Munjal, who's the promoter of Hero Cycles and uh, one of the key men at Hero Group. Welcome, Pankaj. Thank you. One of the things that we've read you say, which is a maxim for you, is, is you've only got one life, live it today. Number one question, do you do that? And, and how do you do it, Pankaj? Life is short. Uh, we have one day. We have one day at a time. Uh, my father came uh, from Pakistan with very little, you know, resources and became whatever global scale, global leader, global brand. And I saw him live it. I saw him live and he said, you have eight hours a day, 100, 100 rupees to spend, use it well and go in one direction. So if you do that, you're not living yesterday, baggage is not there, the front end, you know, exactly they're not there. And I heard some of my people say, I heard your father laugh. It was very genuine. So that is the picture or the value system in us. So that is what I'll say for one life. So that's come strongly down the line. But when you were a younger man, Pankaj, did you think about not joining the family business, doing something totally different? No, I kind of was born with this DNA. I would go around the factory, meet people, meet the labor, understand the processes, understand the dealer. I really enjoyed it. I think it's in my DNA, my, my genetic code. Well, it's a strong, a strong code, clearly. But if you think, let's say, just uh, fantasizing, if you like, um, uh, Pankaj, are there other industries that have kind of caught your eye or in another world you might have thought about? No, I am quite a inward looking focused guy. In whatever you do, you've got to be number one in that business. So you have to sharpen your focus. Now, Hero's ready with our design center in uh, England. It's a very good styling studio, very good teams we have got there. With our engineering center in Berlin, we bought brands in Germany, we bought brands in England. So we bought the loose pieces, they're working. And now we are ready to take a world market. So you're on a journey towards excellence, Pankaj, operating in, in multiple markets. What elements of, the, of that journey have been hard and, and, and what's come, come more naturally or easier? I had a very tough uh, formative years of my life. Uh, we used to make mopeds and we were doing very well. But we were doing very well of a market that was shrinking and it vanished. So we had to shut the business. I was a poor son of a rich father. I went to my factory, the, the board meeting that was shut and I said, hey guys, we got no business. We got debt, we got people, but we don't have cash flow coming in. And I think that kind of pain, uh, it really shaped us very well. We didn't have emails that time, but at that stage, we really started to go all out. You know, if you're drowning, you need to climb up. Even if there's a snake, you get a chance to climb up. So we started to send letters, emails to everybody around the world in our business. And we said, hey, this is who we are. This is what we can do. And in a span of one year, we got Bombardier, the, the Canadian uh, giant, and they came and they said, let's make a transmission. So the point I want to make is that uh, we shifted very well. We shifted with, with a lot of pain, but 
there came a lot of gain with this. A lot of technology, capability, cash flow. And now the group is pretty large. We've got 9,000 people working. We've got 14 plants around the uh, world. And uh, we are growing. We are growing double digits. If we don't grow 20% year on year, there's something wrong with the group. It's got a lot of you know, steam in it now. So that success, as you say, came from a reaction to to a difficult moment in the in the history of of, of the group Pankaj. But what was it that caught the eye of people like Bombardier? Was what were the tools and techniques about attracting them? Was it great salesmanship? Was it luck? Was it time and place? Talk to us a little bit about that, if you could. You know, if you don't have a cash flow coming in and you got cash going out, it's very painful. You see your Cash position come down, that goes up. Uh, we met Bombardier. The, the business development man came in the morning at eight o'clock. I remember that very well. Joseph Furlinger was his name, is his name. I just met him. And he came in the morning and he said, Can you make this transmission for me? We had never made a transmission. For us in the moped, it was bought out. But then we did it. We struggled hard for one year. We became the single source. Then came BMW, Ducati, Harley, Harley Davidson, all these big, big people came after that, it started to grow. But that was that struggle really paid off very well. Another example I remember, uh, they had no business. So Delphi, it's a General Motors daughter company. So uh, they are in Gujarat. They were in Gujarat. They wanted to sell that asset. So at 10 o'clock, I went there in the morning, we saw a small asset, we said, let's take it. So when things were struggling and your back is against the wall, you really put in your best. Whatever you got, you put in your best. But these two promises really paid off and it's taken us very, very far today. We serve some of the best clients around the world, distant supply chains, digital supply chains now, and we are investing a lot into technology and supply chain capability. Well, and, and as we've seen from many guests on the show, there's a direct link between, often between adversity and opportunity. Um, Pankaj, you, you've said it yourself, you're a focused man. It sounds like you move at speed. Let's talk a, a little bit, a bit about the way you manage and, and, and other things that are working for you. How would you describe your kind of management working style? Or more importantly, how would others describe it? Maybe take risks. We have to innovate on the process. Like in our bicycle industry in India, unfortunately, we don't have safe cycling tracks like the developed part of the world. So the bicycling was for my servant or for my child, but it was never for me. That was the culture in my country till some time back. Then one fine day on a Sunday, I was on my iPad and I saw a company in Spain they had made an e-bike. They put a motor, and with that motor, there was transformation. They did very well. Bosch was making their motors, and you know it became an e-bike, electric bike. On Sunday, I called up my R&D man. I said, come on, let's do this. He said, hey, you know what? I've already got this battery and the motor, and in a week's time, we put it together. I tested the bikes firstly. We talked to big Japanese partners to help us with the motor, controller, battery, all these things. And I'm very, very proud to tell you that in two years' time, we've got 70% market share in the country. But but that's the that's the that's the interesting question, isn't it? The results speak for themselves, awesome achievement, awesome scale. But in terms of what we're interested in, Pankaj is how did you get that done? Is it because you have a, an amazing team that's very collegiate? Is it because you're super command and control? I'm just intrigued by you and how you manage. I don't know. I'm blessed with a good team. The, it was because of the team leaders. It was surely because of all these electrical, electronic. I mean, can you imagine we were ready for this? In a bicycle company, in an auto company where we make gearboxes, we had electrical departments. We had mechatronics. We had electronics. So all these people got together and they could put it together and then we could you know, improve quality, grind the costs and uh, take it forward. So I guess as a leader, you have to you know, align people to your vision. They have to believe in it. They have to stretch themselves to believe in it. Uh, you have to leave them free 
to you know tell them okay guys come on go ahead let's do it but where they need support then you have to be shoulder to shoulder with them to help them achieve so i guess it's a combination of all that you mentioned and uh, they could uh, do a good job i also want to make a uh, remark here today hero owns the most expensive e bike brand of the world hnf and we are cost leaders so in the brand spectrum we got from technology to cost leadership in the whole place and uh, like in a luxury car you would look the babiness in sheet metal that is the level of the capability the labor and the staff and our operator the building and we'll we are going it's going to be sold for 10000 euros is two times the price of a car in india that is the level of capability absorbed in two years well and just con- t- continuing that theme um when you look at the market and you see people like Peloton currently valued at 30 billion dollars with a forecast to get to 60 billion dollars do you think you could pull something like that off as well uh, we are outdo people one gadget or one device which we are launching in april fourth week in two weeks from now in germany in hnf in in the body we have something called vo2 max vo2 max is the measure of how much oxygen you need when your heart is under stress and how much you get so that delta tells you how your heart condition will be 10 years 20 years from now i mean if hero can introduce something like this on the road where i use the bike when i travel to work or i go to school and then i get a vo2 max measurement that will be joy that will make a healthy you know nation and society and and in terms of contrasting um somewhere like cycling your bike in copenhagen or amsterdam we're doing the same uh, exercise in new delhi i mean you know forget about vo2 max if i take a bike out where i live in central delhi i'll either be run down or i'll or i'll collapse from pollution are you, are you bullish on whether we're going to sort out some of these issues in in the capital and other cities and uh, the roads are finite how can the cars be infinite we'll hit a grid block and we got a very able government we can look around world over the car lanes are dug up and they're getting converted into cycling lanes the urban commute is being mandated of cycle and e-cycles and you find in europe urban congestion reducing urban pollution coming down fossil fuel healthy nation people go with the feel good factor to work i mean there is so much in that society if you go i mean you can't be the best if you're stuck for 45 minutes in a traffic jam or in your car it's not uh, the best so i don't know indian government has to realize this the sooner we do the better it is because we have to do it there's no way out the whole world is converging to that i will not spend my life in a car or in traffic i want to live in the 15 minute city so we have a problem here we need a government we need it to be fixed and just um i mean fingers fingers crossed it would be an amazing new delhi a 15 minute city um i hope i live to see it but staying staying on india we've had a number of guests on the show who are um you know really world class manufacturers whether that's Sulaj Ferodia or Neeraj Kamwar or Vikram Karloska you know multiple people um they and your business seem to prove that the make in india slogan is real and yet at this stage of the game globally one wouldn't necessarily say that india was a was a manufacturing powerhouse where where do you stand on all of this and and do you think we can fulfill the promise of make in india it uh, requires some people in the engine room to take the front to you know face the brand and uh, learn from it and then with a little dirs model people would follow they have to we are competitive we have to take the risk some calculated risk to go forward some would pay some would not but those are the kind of bets that you budget and then you go forward but the point i was trying to make was that uh, besides manufacturing see manufacturing is one pie i mean we can have a certain 
business case on those earnings. But we moved up the value chain. Now we are going to branding. We're going to UX UI. Like in example, a little bit later, we're going to launch a cycle that if a kid wants to go to school and the school starts at 8 a.m., he, she doesn't want to reach later than one minute to eight. They go there, they throw the bike, and they run to the class. This bike, fallen bike, will stand up and get locked. So we are getting into these value-add features, which they are willing to pay for. So once the whole supply, once the whole chain is connected, then you make a solid that value proposition. So only earning in manufacturing, only when you export a box is X. But when you do all of this, then it is multiples of that. Okay, and, and you mentioned brands. I remember some years ago, Hero contracted Wolf Olins, the, the agency in, in the UK, to do a, a rebrand of the group at the time. This was a long time ago. But talking about brands, talking about brands, Pankaj, um, do you find that topic of trying to create emotional and, and functional connections with the customer, the marketing topic, do you find that comes easy to you as an individual or, 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 or how do you see that? Brands is a very scientific uh, approach. I, we've got very good people to look after this and we burned a lot of money, you know, in branding and acquisition. So the brand promise, you have to be very, very sharply positioned on what is a brand promise? What is the positioning? How do you deliver the promise? How is it, you know, different from the competition and that edge, that difference is what we need to sell to the customer that he pays for it. So it's a it's a journey. It's a journey, very long term. You can't go buy a brand and put that label on your product and say, hey, I own the brand and I'm going to sell it. I mean, it can't take you very far. You have to go behind. What, what is it? What is the promise that I'm making? Where is my edge? And then it has to come into your manufacturing, into your design engineering, and that edge has to be sharpened all the time. Uh, brand innovation becomes a commodity in three months. So you have to have next edge ready. So a constant exercise, but if you think about brand as it relates to the, you know, the, the hero group as a whole, is, is there a single thing that defines the difference between hero as a brand and everybody else? Yeah, so this, uh, we also have motorcycles in the whole hero arena. So what we are trying and aspiring and sweat it out to do every day is trust. If you buy a hero, we'll take care of you. Okay, very good. Let's turn, if we can, um, Pankaj, from, from the business to the, to the family. You know, you're, you're one of India's more famous um, family businesses, and you're well known for the harmonious uh, uh, circumstances of how the whole thing's worked. First question is, is it always as harmonious as it looks? And, and, and if it is as harmonious as it looks, how, how do you manage that across multiple generations and branches of a family? My elders worked with 14 nephews and sons and four people on the top. Those 14 sons must be having another family of two to three people. So it was good 50, 60 people in one big joint family working. And 50 years we worked together, 54 years, 50, something like that. And uh, then the family became large. We had many joint ventures and, you know, it was overlapping roles. And when they planned to realign the group, there was a, I, I was not in the room, but the four elders sat in the room and they said, my dear brother, I don't deserve this. You take it. The other brother said, I don't deserve this. You take this cash. I mean, my respect for my father and my elders grew. Maybe this is the DNA that we need to take back home. So that has had such a big influence on me and my family, that we try and keep that in mind and work, and it works. So if you do have dissonance, if you do have issues, then it's all about sacrifice. Well, it's an inspirational thing that it, that it does work. Um, just talking about the younger generation, um, 
You're, um, I think you've said that you get a kick out of working with, uh, with the younger generation. It, it gives you a buzz. Um, do you find, one question I had was, do you find that you understand the whole world of social media and Instagram and TikTok, which is often the vocabulary of the, of the younger generation? I'm a user. My daughter-in-law keeps showing me the videos and keeps getting a smile and then you go deeper, what did you do? But uh, knowing it fully, no way. I mean, it's changing. If I knew it yesterday, it's different now, today, already. So we've got teams, we've got youngsters, we have got people for, you know, various segments, uh, who will talk to who, what age group will talk to, what age group, what strata will talk to, what strata. So today it's about segmentation. Today it's all about, you know, micro segmentation. So we have to get the right people to talk that language and then listen to them and then believe them and then, you know, fulfill whatever they want to build on their objectives. And you're a man who's a mentor, I'm sure, to many people, including your son, even if he walks out from time to time. But when, when, uh, when the young come to you, um, Pankaj, and, and say, for example, what, what advice would you, you know, what, they're asking you for advice. What's the one piece of advice you might give them? They don't want advice, I mean, for sure. They, they are clear what they are doing, then they want to test it out, and they want to, uh, you know, learn, they want to fall down and they want to learn and stand up on their own. Uh, my advice uh, would be that uh, your long-term goals should be very, very clear, very sharp. The team should be aligned to that goal and you have to innovate in the process. It, it, we're, we're kind of in the final furlong of our conversation, which we're really enjoying, Pankaj. Um, a couple more questions. <laughs> Um, I gather from our researchers that your, your favourite song is Stronger by Kelly Clarkson. Um, now, following that up, do you have a favourite book and a favourite movie? My favourite uh, book, Jim Collins, uh, Built to Last. I really love that. I read it again and again and I take it deeper. Every time you read it, every time you read it, there's something new in it. And uh, my favorite uh, song would be Osibisa, Oja Awake. So me and my daughter-in-laws love to sing it, which we were doing that together last evening. Who's, um, who's the better singer? <laughs> she, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good answer. Um, and just to wrap up, um, if you could take out uh, an advertising campaign for every billboard on Earth, and you wanted to give a message to the people of Earth, just one message, what would that be? Bigger the problem, bigger the smile. Everything will get solved with that. I think that's a great way to end. Certainly you've put a smile on our face and you're an inspiration to all of us. Thank you for joining the show. Thanks to you. Thank you very much.